Hi. Welcome back to Star Wars Minute. It's your daily podcast in which we analyze, scrutinize, and celebrate the rise of Skywalker, episode nine of the Star Wars saga, one minute at a time. I'm Alex Robinson from alexrobinson.fun. I'm Pete the Retailer from Pete the Retailer.fun. The Mysterios Coconos from the Loudest Podcast. Dot fun. <laughs> oh. Welcome back, Asterios. Closing out the week with us. So glad you could be here. It's, it's, it's always awesome. You guys, I don't talk about Star Wars. With, I talk about Star Wars like once a year, and it's with you guys. And it's great. Wow. It's, <laughs> uh, well, you're lucky because you got minute number 95, which has some fun stuff in it. 95. Uh, for instance, it starts off with uh, Ray stealing the Wayfinder from Kylo Ren's wrecked twin ion engine Whisper. And it ends a minute later with Ray looking up at a soggy X Wing. Hmm. <laughs> it's like, because it's the duality of man here. You got the, the TIE fighter on fire, and then you got the X Wing, which is wet water. Whoa. And it's kind of, mm. it's Ray's job to be in the middle, kind of lukewarm water. <laughs> um, <laughs> lukewarm. <laughs> lukewarm. Oh, wow. <laughs> um, but yes, I yes, got to say. Go ahead. Uh, uh, it took me, uh, I think I, I, I was, because we're, I'm watching this on our system where we watch the clips, I did not have the closed captioning, which is something that you've been asking for for about 10 years. <laughs> um, and, uh, have not in- enacted that, uh, that capability yet working mm-hmm. on it. I hadn't noticed. Um, but, um, the, I went back to the book to figure out what exactly Ray says when she pulls the wayfinder out. Uh, she was like, I have to and I'm like, what? And she's like, man, man. And I kept, I watched it a couple of times. I'm like, what is she saying? I thought she started saying numbers. Um, she's, she's playing lotto. Um, no, she, um, well, she does say a number because she, she, this led me to a realization here that she is not, uh, as far, when she, last minute, she was like, yeah, I know, I, I, I wrecked everything. Um, I don't have, no, what is, um, what did she say? Like, I wrecked everything. Like, I, I, I don't have the, the Wayfinder, and I, I wrecked... I don't have the Wayfinder. I wrecked Ren's uh, TIE Fighter. Um, That's two separate... Yeah, I don't have the Wayfinder. I destroyed Ren's ship. That's two separate ideas. I didn't realize that she thought that she had two things that were wrong. I thought she just, oh, I don't have the Wayfinder because... I crashed Ren's ship and it was in there. I don't, she didn't realize until this very moment that there was another Wayfinder, Kylo Ren's Wayfinder in his TIE fighter. She didn't know it was in there until just now. Like when she was flying it, she didn't know that there was a Wayfinder in there. Hmm. And so she was just like, ah, no, I, the, like I, I blew up the car and that had the Wayfinder in it. Like that wasn't what she was saying. She was like, yeah, I, I don't have, like, according to, as far as she knew, like, yeah, I can't get there because Kylo Ren crushed the Wayfinder in the Death Star room and I crashed his car when I got here. So, like, uh-huh. I would have to, like, get a new car maybe, like, and find the other, way, like, find another way to get to Exegol or something like that. And then that's when, so this is what she said here is two were made. Two were oh. made. Because she was like, oh, wait, there's two, there's two Wayfinders. And realizes she hears it talk. So not only was that not clear, but we missed a scene with the caretakers. We didn't get to have. There's a scene in the book with the, the caretakers show up more than once when when she's on she's on uh, uh, Akhtu here. The book is um, different than the movie. In in Star Wars Episode Nine: The Rise of Skywalker Expanded Edition by New York Times bestselling author Ray Carson. Um, there's this whole thing where like after like Luke is like you have everything you need. And then it's like uh, two things we don't get: a nap and the caretakers. <laughs> On Luke's orders, Ray lays down in the hut and closed her eyes. She'd given away too much of her life force during the healing, and she needed a brief rest, or she would get nowhere fast. Luke hadn't pushed her or told her how he expected her to get to Exegol, just given her space to think. It was exactly what Leia would have done. Ray flipped onto her back, sighing. She'd been asking herself for months, "What would Leia do?" And this time, the answer was easy: Leia would leave Octo and get back in the fight. In fact, she wouldn't have come here in the first place. Even though, like Ray, Leia was descended from unspeakable evil. Luke, too, when given the choice, had left to face his fears. How could she do any less? So she's kind of psyching herself up. And Luke Ray left gave up to resting. F- in, in 
Return of the Jedi, I guess. No, in, in, uh, sorry, Last Jedi. Last movie. He left hiding, got out of hiding, and he, well, he left. He didn't leave. He left yeah, his hut. He, he, he went to the rock down the block to face his fears. Um, and, uh, so she gets up, um, one of the caretakers immediately stood up from a stone bench, giving Ray a disapproving glare over her beak-like no- nose. Ray glared right back as the caretaker went inside the hut she just vacated, no doubt to clean and straighten. <laughs> Had she been outside the doorway all night, the caretakers probably couldn't wait for Ray to be gone, just like last time. Um, but then she goes over. The tie was now a smoldering wreck. A few porgs huddled nearby as close to the warmth of the dying fire as they dared. Something twinged inside her and called her as she stepped forward. A night drizzle had cooled the wreckage. Following her instincts, she reached down and shoved the detritus aside. And a wayfinder sat there, smokeless and pristine. Vader's wayfinder. Ray whispered, two were made. And then that that's that's how this discovery goes. I feel like like having her be like upset and quiet for a second and be like, oh, what am I going to do? And then hear kind of the voices and kind of reason this out is something that probably should have stayed in there versus her just being like, Tibaba and like picking up the Wayfinder out of the wreckage. I, um, I, I don't know. I think it would have been a mistake to have your hero take a nap in the third act of the film. <laughs> <laughs> uh, starting but... in between act two and act three, you're going to take a nap. <laughs> Go to the Act bathroom, two. you know? <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know. I the fa- I didn't even... Do you think if she had known the Wayfinder was in the ship, would that have changed her mind? Would she have been like, oh, there's a Wayfinder right here. Okay, I'll go, I'll go confront him. Um, well, I mean, it's certainly like, you know, like... I, like, personally, I can relate to like, ah, I can't do this because there's so many things that... I would have to do in order to you do know, like whatever, whatever, like, sure, you know, minor task on my, like, like, oh, I can't, I don't want to, I don't want to, I can't do this. I can't call to make the doctor's appointment because my, you know, the insurance card's in my wallet and that's downstairs. So like, oh, here's my wallet. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, oh, okay. All right. All right. Well, that's, that'll be a little, like one less little obstacle to overcome is like, so if she was just like, yeah, I can't go there because I don't have a wayfinder and I don't have a ship. <laughs> And then she's like, and then it's like, and she hears this whispering coming from the thing. All right, I do have a wayfinder. And then Luke is just like, whoop, ship. So <clears throat> I, I think showing her going from being absolutely defeated to, you know, kind of getting, maybe this could have been a musical montage, going back to talking about Rocky Three and how angry we all were about it. Maybe she could have used, you know, like a little musical montage of Ray getting kind of psyched back up from absolute, from from hitting bottom to leaving the thing and getting like, you know, include the include the caretakers. They're great in a musical montage because they could be like the little disapproving, like mm-mm-mm. As Backup she does, singers. You know. Right. And then finally, like once she's ready to go, then they're like, mm-hmm. They give her a thumbs up, mainly because she's leaving, but she thinks it's like because they finally approve of her. <laughs> That's a very rude <laughs> gesture in, in uh, yeah. caretaker uh, culture. Yeah. They're like, get out of here. I, maybe that's why there was so much ADR in that ghost Luke scene is that some mm. of that stuff that was covered in the, I'm going to take a nap and lay down for a while while the ship cools off. Mm. Maybe some of that was in there. Could be. I have to say it's okay. So like I, I heard that ADR line too, where like, she's like, they made two of them. And I'm like that. It really does seem like we're trying to, it, it just seems like plot point spackle. You know, mm. where where it's like, I don't care about this Wayfinder. I don't. I really don't. But making it Vader's Wayfinder, like they had in the book, actually, that's cool. And if she had said Darth Vader's Wayfinder in the mm. movie, I would have been like, neat. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, here she's, you know, using kind of that same, she's like, all right, like this, it's like a symbol of like, oh, okay, overcoming your evil background and you're like oh darth vader i'm gonna use this thing you know darth vader's wayfinder to overcome that you just like you know luke and leia kind of you know kind of uh, overcoming their this is a symbol of her of you know turning on turning your back on on you know the evil that could be your heritage and all that stuff i don't know you could have made it meaningful and being like darth vader's wayfinder you know what i mean yes i love I like that um, Darth Vader's image is going to be rehabilitated where now people are inspired by something that Darth Vader had. Right, yeah. You know? <laughs> yes, he killed yeah. millions of people, but at that last minute, he was a yeah. hero. That's all that matters. Yeah. How does she know it's Darth like Vader's George w. Wayfinder? Bush's paintings. 
Yeah, yeah, exactly. How does she know it's Darth Vader's Wayfinders or one of those like <gasps> plastic things with the 3D <laughs> like letters? Like a Dymo label. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I don't know what the term was, but yeah. Brother well, Dymo is the brand name. Okay. Of the most the most notable one from the 70s. Yeah, yeah. The, the uh yeah, she flips it over. It's the property of Darth Vader. <laughs> and there's like a like one or two pod racing stickers on it. <laughs> <clears throat> But no explanation um, for how she knows his faders. No, I'm assuming that some, you know, the 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 whispers. Once she picks it up, she touches it. You know, they, that's that's also been added to the Force ability canon is the touching something and understanding, kind of, you know, grocking its its history a little bit, like get the to Sith know dagger a little bit. And the, some and the trivia. Other, yeah, she kind of feels yeah. a little bit of its history when she picks it up. Um, but yes, it it. I feel like this could have been handled a little bit better because there's stuff that was lost here in terms of like, oh, wait a minute. Like what she's, she's kind of like, I didn't know that those are two separate things that she, she didn't realize that she didn't. She's not, she's not the quickest tool in the toolbox. It should have been a caretaker that was just like, hey, you forgot this and like gives her the wayfinder. <laughs> Take your garbage with you. <laughs> yeah. Then we get a floating X-wing. Yes. Well, first we get bubbling in the water, and everyone's mm-hmm. like, "Uh oh, it's that sea monster again!" And then <laughs> suddenly the X wing comes out of it. What'd you Is guys? Somebody gonna get milked here? Come on! <laughs> <laughs> What'd you guys think of floating X wing? I gotta say, I th- not until watching this again with you guys there, I realized like this X wing probably like smells terrible, just mm. terrible. How much? Because it was underwater on Dagobah for a long time. And then time. they flew it around. Uh-huh. And it's been underwater on Octo the whole time. It's going to be like musty and moldy. There's leather seats. It's like that leather's going to like curl and warp. But it's just like, that's like a, imagine so- if Ray has allergies. That's terrible. Mm. <laughs> Salt Black water mold. is very destructive to electronics. <laughs> yes! At least on Earth. So it could be fresh mm. water. We don't know. That's true. It looks salty. <laughs> it looks salty. Yeah. Um. Yeah, it is a little bit like. So like now, yeah, now I'm picturing like, like so Ray takes it and flies to Exegol. Like, is her butt wet the whole time? <laughs> I was thinking it should be like a bathtub where it's up to you know she's like it's totally like up to her oh, yeah. the middle of her waist and all this fish and everything like sloshing like flopping the, around the, the, you know cl- like a oyster sh- you know clam <laughs> shells and a starfish <laughs> stuck to the window and right yeah and it's like we know mm. that like look crustaceans have definitely turned this thing into a reef of some kind it's like mm, right. this X wing's been down there for a while it's got to be full of like mollusks and barnacles and like all this stuff it's just it's it's I don't know. It seems like a big. It seems like a big big hassle. I know they can survive the hard vacuum of space. I'm not yeah, saying that the ship shouldn't work. I'm just saying it's gross. Well, and that maybe that's good. She's drawing on that. You know, they're they're it's teeming with life, and so therefore it's good for mm-hmm. for for the the force. You know what I mean? There's like. It's like, oh, look, all these little microbes and, and uh, you know, like krill and, and uh, you know, barnacle leaks and, and not leaks, uh, uh, limpets and stuff like that. They're all they're they're all stuck to there. And they're, I'm, I'm using their force too to, to fuel my good force. Like I am all the Jedi and all the barnacles on my ship. <laughs> and that one that one weird eel that kept poking me while I was driving here. And I really wish this should. I really think that would have been an awesome detail to have crustaceans and stuff stuck to the ship. I'm mm. disappointed they didn't do that. The seaweed is hanging from it. That's good, at least. Yeah. That's yeah. something. Or do you think how much of that stuff burns off flying in and out of the atmosphere? Like, although in the cockpit, still, I don't know. Is the cockpit sealed against. Not when, not when it sinks on Dagobah. When it sinks on Dagobah, the cockpit's open and it definitely get, got wet in there. So you could probably still smell that. Even you can never get rid of that smell. But yeah. But here, like when it when he when he sinks it here on Octu, is it sealed? Hmm. I would say no. Okay. Because Luke would not want to give himself any. Yeah. He, would, he would want to make it as unpleasant as possible and less temptation to go if the ship is. You know, he really should have just blown it up or something, but I guess he did. He wanted to totally not be able to to right. go back, or if he had to go get milk or something. Yeah, not milk. Well, maybe milk. maybe he didn't do it intentionally. Maybe he was just like you know, 
he would just go there and every once in a while he would take the x-wing and like drive into town and get drunk like i've t- said before billy joel keeps crashing his car in the town that i'm from because you have to make a left turn to get from his house right. you know from so he goes out and gets drunk and makes it you know drives onto somebody's driveway and crashes into a, a fence looks the same way and like one of these times his x-wing is just underwater he's like oh, i'll get it in the morning and then do you think that makes the house more valuable like when they sell it or like did you know hmm. billy joel crashed his car into the tree up front hmm. That would have to be a good selling point. <laughs> Only if you signed it afterwards. <clears throat> um. So the X-wing, Luke. Uh. In the Last Jedi, we saw Luke's hut, if you recall, and the mm-hmm. door to Luke's hut was the repurposed X-wing wing. That's right. Yes. So I did they the, the Telltale Red Five stripes? Did they have to like? Can they? Can she fly without it, or did they have to re? Did they have to solder that back on before it could go? Maybe that's what Luke did first. He took his door off and threw it in the water, and then like, <laughs> like with the force, he oh, attached it. Okay, yeah. Uh, I think overall, it's a fun callback to obviously the original X-wing elevation, and I think also it's a neat use of something from the Last Jedi when they show Luke's X-wing there. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm wondering, do you think they had any idea that at some point someone would be levitating that out, or was that just... Hmm, could be. Probably not, but, because, I mean, they had Luke die there, so it's not like anyone was... Um, he, he By was they, you mean the, the filmmakers or the caretakers? Yeah. No, no, <laughs> <laughs> the filmmakers. Because the caretakers are like, finally, he's cleaning up that big, like, we've been, they've been giving him tickets, like, the whole time. Yeah. They're just like, you can't park that here. <laughs> Well, that's what I was going to say is that there would still be a droid in the, in the, you know, oh, like, wow, like yeah. R5-D4 in the slot there. <laughs> but like Aquaman, because like, <laughs> like, it would be all like waterlogged. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> um, um, yes, I, I, I was wondering about that. I, and, and, you know, I, I joke about it and we're making all, we're being all goofy fun about it, but like, it still does give me a little bit of chills of, of like, I still love seeing that come out when hearing the music, the music is a big part of it. Yeah, with like that majestic kind of thing, and it and it ties into just the emotion of of, um, you know, I I think maybe again you could have structured that differently. So if Ray is if you know if Ray was still like downtrodden and be like I can't and like I, you know I I can't get out of here because I crashed the ship and make it more you know have it emotionally match more kind of like Luke being like I can't in on Dagobah and then have Luke be like you know pull the ship out and it's like, all right, that's one. Like you got one. What else? What, what other, you know, excuses do you have? You know, basically giving her a hard time about it. She was, she was like, I don't have a ship. And like, whoop. And then like, what other excuses? Yeah. Where's the wayfinder? Here you go. Yeah. Uh, I, 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 it's chilly. You know, I need a jacket. The, yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, it still, I still got a little bit of chills kind of watching this because it's such a, it ties so closely into uh, such a, one of the best moments of all Star Wars uh, for me. And so it totally, um, you know, I joke, but also I feel. Sure, you try to convince us of that. Mm -hmm. That's what a robot would say, right? (laughs) Asterios, how do you feel about the X-Wing flying around? I feel the exact same way that Pete feels, where it's like, yeah, look, I, I know this is a reference and I could be a cynic about it, but I like what it's referencing, so I like this. It's like... It's great. I like hearing that song. I like seeing Mm -hmm. Ghost Luke do stuff. It's just like the more Mark Hamill in these pre in these sequels, the better. And so it's like I'll I'll take all I'll take all of it I can get. Yeah, I I, my one gripe with it is Mm -hmm. that uh, Forrest Ghost Luke looks like he's straining awfully hard. He's like. You know, and I feel like by the time you're a force ghost, this should be like right. nothing. It should be like picking up peanuts. You know what I mean? Like it should mm-hmm. be the easiest thing in the world for a force ghost to do. Because you maybe he's like half asleep. He's like, uh, oh yeah, or uh, he's just trying to uh, make it look make it look cooler by being like, oh, see how much <laughs> work you do. You know, yeah, right. Really straining, or maybe it's heavier because there's a lot of water. In it. I, I mean, that's. <laughs> yeah. Look, I also um, I agree with Alex that like I don't think he should have been straining, especially because like the straining faces he makes look goofy. Like you're not obviously you are not watching this a minute at a time, listeners. But it's like you can, 
I, when I saw it, I didn't notice, but now I'm like, these faces are, it looks like this guy's passing gas. Like, this guy's making <laughs> weird faces. <laughs> Gotta go mine some Tabana gas. <laughs> Excuse me. Exactly. And now I, now I can't, because I, I was joking about it being a musical montage scene of her changing her mind. And once you said, yeah, when they, it pulls the thing out, I like the song. And now I'm like, what would be the song for the montage of Ray changing her mind and kind of getting going from like, I can't do this to being like ready to fly off to Exegol to save the world. What's a good song for that? Uh, uh, my, my brain goes immediately to some of the best, you know, like montage songs, but I'm trying to think of these other ones that are upbeat and more on, on brand. I think it should be a kind of pastiche of those kind of songs, like mm-hmm. a survivor get survivor to play the song, mm-hmm. but like the lyrics would all be in hoodies. Ooh, so you would not yet. hear what it's, Better yet, What's uh, better yet, I'm gonna flip back and say, uh, um, Working Leia out. told me Leia told me she sensed the death of her son at the end of her Jedi path. Oh, Jedi path. I thought it said journey. Sorry. So I was gonna be like, oh, it should be journey. <gasps> yeah. Um, but uh, it's not. It's Jedi path. And it's, uh, uh, never don't mind. stop believing. That would have been perfect. Mm. <laughs> there you go. <clears throat> oh, that that would be a all right. Yeah. <laughs> Can somebody <laughs> make a little hoodies. musical montage out of this and, and yeah, do a cover of Don't Stop Believing in Huddies and then cut together these scenes of uh, <laughs> just all the stuff from from uh, from yeah. here on in. I guess there's not that much stuff, but you could do it. You could do it. <clears throat> I would also accept uh, the original uh, Lopty Neck as the as the mm. montage song. So why? How would that tie that? And then cut to cut to them actually playing it here because they're that's that you know they travel around they're they're oh, a working totally, band yeah. right after they escaped, and they'd be, they'd be all be slightly older and you right know, yeah it'd be like they had to replace three of the members and stuff like, like that max rebo would have a beard <laughs> <laughs> well anything else from minute number 95 hmm mysterious 95 anything or anything from the whole Anything you wanted to talk about in the the yes. earlier part of the movie, or you already told that... us how much you love the ending. Right, so <laughs> the other you want us to look out for later. <laughs> how do you feel about Lando coming back? I, I, it's another one of those things where it's like I want it. I want to see Billy D. Williams all the time, maybe on every TV show. I want to turn on the radio and I want to hear Billy D. Williams is like giving me his opinion of the of the Cubs and the Sox game today. Like I. Love it. <laughs> Look, I know there's a thing where it's like he's got a daughter or something, and then they like do a thing at the end where they're like, maybe we'll have a Disney Plus series. And it's like, okay. <laughs> I don't know. Look, it just in closing, I suppose, I just think it's weird that we live in a time of like unlimited Star Wars and and these i don't know why these these sequels haven't made more of an impact it's like i like these actors i like these characters i like a lot of the stuff that happens in these movies like they're not perfect but like what the i mean it's you know it's what the heck is but it's like uh raiders of the lost ark yeah i mean obviously well and also star <laughs> wars 1 and star wars 2 are perfect but it's like <laughs> you know personal. And then I hear that they're going to make like a, a new movie with Ray where Ray's going to be like a teacher now. And I don't know why that bores me, but it does. I, do, I have very, it's, it's unfortunate because it's like they had J.J. Abrams. That first movie was great. That second movie had good stuff in it, but it was weird. And then it's like the movies didn't get weirder and more personal it's like it's like interesting first it's like good great first movie interesting second movie boringish third movie I mean look there's stuff in this movie I like it's just I I don't know I I guess I'm just disappointed it's not like the prequels where you watch them and you're like these are garbage like this is trash you know it's kind of like you you watch this third movie and it's it's like McDonald's it's like yeah, there. Yeah, this is this tastes. This tastes fine. I don't know. I feel bad. <laughs> it's a grand slam breakfast. <laughs> uh, yeah. I don't know. I don't know what the explanation is for why uh, 
uh, you know, I don't know what they could have done differently necessarily, but uh... I'm the only thing I think of, and and uh, apologies to listeners if I'm over talking these guys. The connection <laughs> in the at the last possible episode, our connection became garbage, and I'm like, oh, <laughs> this connection couldn't have waited one Not more our minute. Personal connection. It's like That's the only thing I could think of is to uh, is that they could have just given them more time to cook. You know what I mean? It's like. I know with the I know like after the second movie like Disney was like you're putting out this third movie immediately and people complained about the second one in Rose Tico so bring JJ Abrams back like um and then after this they were like all right all right the high republic yo oh, more time to cook huh We'll give all the time in the world to like a bunch of weird creatives. Like we'll hire a bunch of weird creatives to like all sit in a room and come up with this thing called the High Republic. And like, won't that be cool? And it's like, I don't know. Nothing. None of it is. There's not one thing from the High Republic that broke through like Andor, where everyone was like, no, no, no. Even if you think these Disney Plus shows aren't good, you do need to see Andor. Like, Andor, like, the New York Times, like, NPR, like, everyone was, like, talking about, like, Andor, and they're like, it's Andor. If you don't like Star Wars, you will like Andor. And it's like, nothing from the High Republic broke through. And I would know if it did. I'm on the internet all the time reading about this garbage. So it's just like, I guess at the end of the day, this was all like a crazy, goofy California kid's idea. And everyone keeps trying to like make money on it and like trying mm. to like exploit it, exploit it. Like it, reminds, it makes me think of The Onion, the, where it's like mm. there's been like 50 different things The Onion has tried to do to also make money and they've all failed. There's been an Onion movie. There's been Onion TV shows and Onion web content and an Onion TikTok. And it's like, it all fails. It's like, you know, we really just kind of do want to read these silly headlines. And that's kind of all we want from you mm -hmm. guys. And I feel like it's the same thing with Star Wars where it's like, it's a lot of people like mining for gold. And it's like, you know, there might not be much gold here. But then, I don't know. I don't know. But I, I like the Han Solo movie. And I like the Mandalorian. So it's like, oh, maybe I'm being a little too cynical. Maybe it's just late and I need a nap. Well, it's, you know, bronze is nice, too. <laughs> Doesn't all have to be gold. You can have some bronze, you know, you can have some, some uh, you know, pewter <laughs> around your house. Don't let the kids eat it, but, you know, like, uh, it's, you know, doesn't all have to be gold. I think everybody's holding it to too high of standard. And Good I also point. think that it's... If not possible it is true that not every star wars thing now is for everyone not that it's not for right. them but yeah. there's so much star wars stuff out there that some of the obviously we know people who really love the high republic stuff not for us but you know i don't want to begrudge them so i don't know i don't know what i'm trying to say yeah no i don't I want to insult republic. anybody's taste or opinion it's like i i agree with you it's like look they hired so many excellent creatives. You're, I'm yeah. sure some of the High Republic stuff is good. They hired everybody. <laughs> like, <laughs> they hired everyone and they sent them to a resort. And they were like, fix this. But uh, <laughs> I, I, I'm telling you, know, it's, uh, I don't know. I don't, I, I don't know why it hasn't broken through. It's like those Star Wars Marvel comics broke through. I think the original ones. Like, um, Andor broke through. The Mandalorian broke through. But just, I don't know, something about... It's like the third prequel didn't break through. And it's like, hmm. these are the ones that these should be the, these should work. And the other thing is, it's kind of, for me, it's kind of like a bait and switch where it's like, I really liked The Force Awakens. And at least I thought The Last Jedi had cool stuff in it. Like, I know I make fun of Luke Skywalker trying to murder his nephew, that's the most interesting thing Luke Skywalker's ever done in the history of Luke Skywalker. Almost killed baby Hitler. Like, interesting. <laughs> I don't know if this belongs in a kid's movie, but at least it's interesting. <laughs> it teaches kids about what to do if you meet <laughs> kid Hitler. Right. Or Kittler, as I call him. Wait, Kitster? <laughs> 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 
Well, I guess that will wrap up minute number 95 of Stereos. Thank you uh, for once again returning. People should check out the loudest podcast. Yes, please For more do. of your uh, brand of hijinks. Please do. <laughs> I'd love it if you would. Uh, and hey, guess what, listeners? We're getting up to some hijinks on the weekend. That's right. Our Patreon show. And that's right. Ahsoka. We are in the uh, reviewing Ahsoka era of the uh, program. We're about to be. <laughs> I lost track. But uh, yes, if that's something you'd like to hear, want to hear our opinions on Ahsoka and her white light, her white saber, then uh, go to StarWarsMinute.com slash Patreon and you will uh, get access. It's the lowest level, right? Isn't that the, the, the people who get no. access to that? Not, um, we're, there's, we're, we're, go check it out at StarWarsMinute.com slash okay. Patreon. You'll see, what's, yes. you'll see what the deal is. And uh, we also have some upper tier novelty items, which no one has taken advantage of yet. If you want to go see a sporting event with Pete in your town, give us a uh, give us a donation there. If you want to, you want to mm-hmm. call from us. Is that still up there? Uh, talk, yeah, talk to us on a Zoom call. Uh, that's mm-hmm. a that's an option level. All these fun things that you can do with us and give us your money. <laughs> so um, yes. That will wrap up this minute. Goodbye to Asterios. And uh, listeners, we'll see you again on Monday for the next episode of... Star Wars Minute. Rise of Skywalker Minute. You guys didn't do it. Stop. <laughs>